Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 8. Where the Ethiopians and the Lubim, not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because you relied on the Lord, He delivered them into your hand. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, glory to God. Here we read about Hallelujah, glory to God. King Asa. There he says, uh, um, So the Lord sends his prophet and speaks to King Asa, saying that, Hallelujah, glory to God. When, was, when did this happen? When we turn to chapter 14. Hallelujah, glory to God. In verse 2, uh, verse 1 and 2, we read about King Asa coming to the, you know, um, reign and, you know, becoming a king after his father. And then when he was a new king, Hallelujah, the word of God says, verse 6, the land had rest. He had no war in those years because Lord had given him rest. Then what happened? Hallelujah, verse 8. Hallelujah, verse 9, if you read. Then Zehra the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million men and 300 chariots. And he came to Maresha. Maresha. So Asa went out against him and they sent the troops in battle array in battle array in the valley of Sephata at Maresha. And Asa cried out to the Lord. That's when it happened. Asa prayed to God. This is a very famous prayer. We all use it when the, in the times of you know trouble. Asa cried out to the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord, our God, for we rest on you. And in your name we go against this multitude, O Lord. You are our God. And do not let man prevail against you. We so here Asa says, We rely on you, Lord. O Lord our God, for we rest on you, we depend on you, we rely on you, we lean on you for your help. And in your name only we are going against this multitude. Because you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. So the Lord stuck the Ethiopians before Asa and Judah and the Ethiopians fled and the Lord smote them in such a way that, that they couldn't recover. If you read it in verse 5, 4, 13 and the latter part, they could not recover for they were broken before the Lord and His army. And hallelujah, glory to God. So when he cried, it, cried out to the Lord, the Lord delivered him from, hallelujah, the great multitude that came against King Asa. And in that time he totally depended, depended on God's providence and God's help. Hallelujah, glory to God. Completely relied on God. Never thought about his power at all. Then as the days and years went by and the Lord commanded rest uh, in his kingdom. If you read in chapter 15, uh, the Spirit of God came upon uh, Azariah, the son of Obed-Odit. And then he said, he says, he tells people of Judah saying that, Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you, verse 2. While you are with him, if you seek him, he will be found by you. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. 
Hallelujah, glory. He made his way right before God. If you read the previous verses and all, we may not have time. And even in this chapter it says, he did the right thing in the sight of God. So, so God stood by his side and fought the battle for him. And then, hallelujah, glory to God, God commanded rest in all the days of King Asa. Uh, through the to, after this war, he had to fight the war. To God permits this this battle for Asa to learn to lean on God. Hallelujah. When he came to reign, there was rest. Then some one battle is permitted, and God, when he leaned on God, God fought the battle and gave him a mighty victory and then again the word of God says Lord gave them rest all around in verse 15 the latter part and also hallelujah 19 verse 19 there was no war until the 35th year of the reign of Asa there was no war rest 35 years of experience now he's an experience become a bit experience for 35 years of kingship now again there is a test for him here he fails miserably what happens here the king of israel yeah king of israel Baasha, king of israel came up against judah and built rama that he might let none go out or come in to Asa king of Judah. So when king of Israel, the Baasha, came against Asa, then this time, oh counting on his experience, counting on his years of being in kingship, maybe, Asa did not see God. All these years of rest. Sometimes we may think why we are always at war. It is for good only. We keep relying on God always. Hallelujah. When rest comes, it's human tendency to go away in spirit from God. The dependency, leaning, leaning on God, relying on God. Hallelujah. We'll go. Sometimes it's good, that's why David also says, it's good that I've been afflicted. It's good that we are in war front always. It's good, but then it keeps our spirit fervent, it keeps us vigilant, you know, diligent, watchful. So because of this rest, now, hallelujah, he has become, you know, always the battle around us keep us humble. When the battle came, the first battle, Asa humbled himself before God. Completely relied on God. Completely fell at the feet of God, saying that, let not man prevail against you, God. Saying that this battle is yours, I'm not going to fight. But now, hallelujah, glory to God, rest. Physical rest, mental rest, spiritual rest. We should rest on the Lord. Hallelujah. The rest we should use it for the glory of God. We people should be at rest. Be still and know that I am God. That is the rest. Be still, not perturbed, not worked up, not anxious, not worried. That's the rest. Always our mind and spirit resting on the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Keeping ourselves. Only then we can also enjoy the peace of God. Oh, hallelujah, if we can't take our minds and hearts from God, then there is no rest. We become restless. When God hides His face, we become restless. So here when God gave the rest, Asa became high-minded and, you know, totally, hallelujah, glory to God, independent of God. Now he did what he felt right and immediately, what did he do? Verse 2, Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. 
who dwelt in Damascus saying, let there be a treaty between you and me. We know that. And he is asking for the help of king of Syria, Ben Hadad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now he is depending on Ben Hadad will not come and help him. Free of cost. So now he is depending on the silver and gold from the house of the Lord and from king's house. He to the king of Syria and the king of Syria comes over there and you know when the king of Israel, Baasha, heard about it, he stopped building Ramoth and ceased his work. So through his human effort, Asa, he thought he had accomplished something with his own strength, with his own power, with his own ability things, with his own wealth. He thought, oh hallelujah, he sent back the enemy. But he lost the favor with God. He lost the favor with God. That's he, some people, you know, here he relied on the silver and gold first. People, <clears throat> when they are in need, when they are in want, hallelujah, they seek God. God also is a very faithful God. He blesses them. When he blesses people of God, then immediately people of God's tendency, may most of them, they rely on the blessings that God had given them and they lose the one who has blessed them. They, they forget about him or they don't sincerely seek him as they sought him in the time of their need. Hallelujah! In the time of their need, they were so desperate and so sincere in seeking Him, so fervent in seeking Him, so humble before Him. Now, after receiving the blessings, the way they seek Him is out of duty's sake. Hallelujah! Out of compulsion, not out of you know love or out of gratitude. They don't seek God. Oh, hallelujah, out of real desire for God, they don't seek Him because their desires are now for all the wealth and the pleasures of the world. Jesus also says in the Gospels, He's saying, hallelujah, one person cannot serve two masters. He will hate the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and the mammon. Mammon means money. Hallelujah. Either you will love God, despise money, or you will love money and despise God. Either one of that only you can do. You cannot do both together. And if you take a survey in this among the Christians, you will be shocked to see and know that their uh, reliance, their dependency, their hallelujah, glory to God, trust is more on the money than on God. Hallelujah. If you challenge people, can you be without money? Can you be without salary? Oh God, they'll say. <laughs> Hallelujah. The expression would be, oh God, can't even imagine. Hallelujah. Can't imagine. Hallelujah. People are so very without their knowledge. Oh, hallelujah. Practically speaking, it is impossible, they would say. Hallelujah. Practically impossible to be without money, without salary, without... But without God? How about being without God? Hallelujah. That they have never given thought to. Hallelujah. They have never thought about it. We are without God for so many days. Without God means seeking Him, finding Him. Hallelujah. Can you say He is with you? You are with Him. If you are with Him, as we saw, He is also with you. When people are not with Him in spirit and mind, and if they are only going to seek Him, duty's sake, out of compulsion, then of course, hallelujah, God even honors that, but they cannot really experience Him personally. 
Hallelujah. So only here we read, we see, Hallelujah. God is grieved about Asa, or oh, not leaning on God, even after 35 years. In the initial stage of, you know, when we became believers, oh, we seek God for everything. As we grow, we become so independent of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. And people act as if they are gods for God by giving tithes and offering and, you know, what not. Hallelujah. Many people have the sad, sad thing. I've seen many people like when they were in real want and need of job or need of you know money or need of uh, some uh, you know promotion in their lives, they were so humble towards God, towards God's people, and so sweetly speaking and all that. After once they are blessed, they become very naive, very subtle, very crafty. And the tone becomes different and their way of speaking becomes different or their approach is different. Hallelujah! Towards God and His people, God's servants, their approach is different. And they now think that they are the ones who have to support God. Support who? God. By supporting God's ministry or supporting God's people. Many people tried that and they lost, I don't know whether favor with God, at least with me. I stopped any more communications or contents. Being blessed through this ministry, through his servant, after they act smart, but servants of God are not depending on any salary or any offering or any tithes but depending totally on God, not really a regular income. Hallelujah! That's why we survive and keep surviving and we will survive. Hallelujah! So people don't know. Every In every country we read, we see recessions and bankruptcies, Greece and so many countries. Oh, very sad to see people, the country, you know, sinking in bankruptcy. Even United States, recession is there and this year they are predicting there will be a very great, you know, downfall for the dollars and the current minimum and finances of U.S. and even Saudi Arabia threatens U.S. saying that, hallelujah, if you are going to Hallelujah, 9-11 thinks something, the Saudi Arabia is involved and if you are going to uh, you know, take action, then we are going to sell all your bonds and we are going to we have nothing to do with your people. He is threatening us like that. Hallelujah! Boast about any other thing other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! So that there is nothing to boast about. All these things are perishable. And then this man, Asa, Hallelujah! First silver and gold. His mind goes when he heard that king of Israel came against him for war. Immediately his mind went towards the silver and gold. Then, Hallelujah! His mind went towards king of Syria Ben Hadad. He sought the help of a king whom he thought was a great, big king, valiant king. Maybe he thought, but what did God say? about that king. The Lord says, since because you relied on the king of Syria, verse 7, and not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of king of Syria has escaped from your hand. That means God had intended to give over even Syria into the hands of king of Judah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Judah had to defeat even the king of Syria whom he thought a great king or big king or powerful king. But he was going to be defeated before Judah if Judah only had relied on God. Hallelujah! But instead, King Asa oh, sought the help from this king, Syria, king of Syria, Ben Hadad. And then, hallelujah, that's what we saw in Psalm 146 and verse 2. 
Hallelujah, glory to God. And Psalm 20, we read some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will trust in the name of our Lord. Hallelujah, in the name of our Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Psalm 20. There we read that. And put your trust. Yeah, Psalm 146 and 2. Do not put your trust in princes. In princes. Nor in a son of man. Nor in a son of man. In whom there is no help. Yes, in whom there is no help, no permanent help. All that he could do was when he came, the king of Israel, Baasha, would stop doing his work. That is all he could do. He could stop. But when God fought the battle, what happened? He crushed them to the core. Hallelujah! Never to rise up again. Hallelujah! God will fight the battle perfectly, completely. A complete battle. But here, in whom there is no help, do not put your trust. 146.3 Psalm 146.3 Do not put your trust in princes nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. Verse 5 Happy is he Yeah Happy, happy is he Who has the God of Jacob Who has the God of Jacob For his help For his help Whose hope is in the Lord his whose God Whose hope is in the Lord his God Happy is he See people who trust in the Lord They are the happiest people on earth. Hallelujah. Never to put our trust on any man or woman or any prince, any power, any authority. We have to respect them. We cannot be, we should not be haughty because the Bible teaches us so. Hallelujah. We have to be hallelujah, glory to God, humble before God and everyone. But then never trust, put your trust, never lean, never rely. Hallelujah. We know um, Jeremiah 17, 5. If you read, Hallelujah, glory to God. Cursed is the man who puts his trust in man. And, and um, makes flesh his strength. And makes flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the yes, Lord. Yes, if you put your trust in man and who makes man. flesh his strength, his heart will depart from the Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. That will make a person to depart from God. Either you can trust God or man, not both together. Hallelujah. If you trust in man or if you trust in the strength of your own flesh, then automatically you will work, hallelujah, in the natural way or a human way. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God, not seeking God's help. Whatever we are able to do also, it is always better to lean on God and His ability. Amen. And you and God together, team up together and do things and it will be glorious. Amen. If you do it on your own strength, you may be able to do some work, but then it will not be perfect, it will not be complete, but with the help of the Lord, yes, it's going to be marvelous. Hallelujah. So, here he was putting his trust on man, trust on kings, trust on horses and chariots. Oh, but we, God's people, powers and authorities, we, the children of God, through Christ Jesus, we are all the powers, if you read in Ephesians chapter 1, and the last verse, hallelujah, it's beautifully given, Hallelujah, more than in the Old Testament, even in the Old Testament, we rely on the Lord. The Lord brings everything, everybody under, uh, no, subdues every other enemy to his children. David says this, and, uh, they say that in Psalm 18. He subdued all my enemies. He brought them down under my feet. That's the power of a child of God. Here, through Jesus Christ, that's what has happened. Hallelujah in chapter 1 of Ephesians and verse 21. Far above all principalities. For above all principalities. And power. Yeah. And might. 
I yeah, for, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name and every name that is named that is named not only in this age or oh, not only in in this age but also in the in that which is to come yeah not only in this age but also in that which is to come he put all things he put all things under his feet under his feet and gave him and gave him to be head over to be head over all things to the church to the church amen. amen which is his body the fullness of him who fills all and in all amen he puts all things he put all things under jesus feet what all things principalities power might dominion every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come we should know about it and put all things under his feet under the feet of jesus christ who is seated the previous verse if you read who is seated at the right hand of the father in the heavenly places oh hallelujah he is seated is put under his feet and gave him gave jesus to be the head over all things to the church to the church so church has the authority power over every principality power might and dominion every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come because all things are brought under the feet of our lord jesus christ oh hallelujah who is the head of the church amen his body the fullness of him who fills all and in all without the church church is the fullness of jesus christ so church has so much power and authority but they don't realize the church you are the church you are the member or the of the body of christ so how much we have to be enjoyed with the body of christ hallelujah the church the body of christ hallelujah for which jesus christ is the head and under his feet only everything else has been brought down we have to realize the worthiness of every blood bought children of god and hallelujah stay awake and realize who we are in the lord and use the power and authority that has been given and brought under and uh, over the powers and authorities that are already been brought under the feet of jesus christ hallelujah, hallelujah. that's why the lord says uh, tells peter oh, upon this rock i will build my church and gates of hell shall not prevail against it hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the lord glory to god so we have to understand no power on earth no power on earth and since jesus is seated at the right hand of the father in the heavenly places so are we hallelujah if you read the chapter 2 of ephesians hallelujah glory to god <coughs> oh hallelujah <coughs> please read that and verse 6 raised raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in christ jesus Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly places and made raised us up and also made us to sit together with every word made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that means everything that are brought under the feet of Jesus are also brought under our feet because we are seated with him hallelujah we should understand that and act accordingly no power on earth should threaten frighten or move you because you have power over everything and they are brought under your already been brought under your feet through Christ Jesus by our lord Jesus Christ he has already overcome everything so okay and then third point we we'll move on to uh we saw first trusting in and relying on gold and silver or money or whatever the worldly wealth and so many things secondly hallelujah relying on the powers and the authorities of the world or man human power hallelujah thirdly thirdly um the proverbs 3 5 please read 
Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart. With all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Yeah, lean not on your own understanding. Mm. In all your ways. In all your ways. Acknowledge Him. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your path. And He shall direct your path. Do not be wise. Do not be wise. In your own eyes. Yes. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. And depart from evil. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. With human understanding, people try to, you know, act upon it. We are not to be people led by our own intuitions or carnality. It has to be crucified. Hallelujah. To be carnally minded is death. That's our own understanding. Hallelujah. But to be spiritually minded is peace and life. Oh, lean not on your own understanding. Your understanding is different. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. They are higher. God's ways are higher. God's thoughts are higher than ours. So we have to subject ourselves to God. Amen? We have to humble ourselves to God for God to fill us with His understanding. Amen? His understanding will go deeper, we will be able to see deeper and wider and clearer vision we will have. Hallelujah! Oh, not the way that worldly people see, not the way the way worldly people think, not the way that ordinary person will react. No, we will be a totally different people. So lean not on your own of understanding, spirit of knowledge, spirit of wisdom from above, from above, from above. It will give a total different perspective of all those things that you, hallelujah, will have you in it in a different angle. Hallelujah. Lean not on your own understanding, lean on the understanding of God. In the way God would understand, in the way God would see things, in the way God would, hallelujah. We have to have that kind of attitude. That's why David was a man after God's own heart. How God's heart was, he reacted, he had the same heartbeat, same thoughts, same desire, same intent, same thoughts. Hallelujah. How was it possible? He was always relying on God. When he was a shepherd boy, when he was a king, or when he became a king, he relied and relied to go after the enemies, to fight against the enemies, to fight the battle. He inquired of the Lord every step. Hallelujah! Of his battle was ordered by God. Amen. He received the counsels from God. Oh, you receive the understanding from God. Once God tells like, Lord, can I go pursue my enemies? Lord says, yes, you go. Then the Lord also gives some directions. Go, don't go this way. Go through the, you know, the, the trees and, uh, you know, then you will find, you'll be able to fight your enemies. Lord gives the directions. He did accordingly and he won the battle. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So, hallelujah, glory to God. We are, this Asa didn't do that. He leaned on his own understanding, thinking I can take the silver and gold and give to king of Syria, ben Hadad, and make him to come and make him, you know, frighten the king of Israel and make him to stop. But he invited more problems, saying that God says from now on you will be having lots of, you know, battles. Hallelujah. So lean not on your own understanding. That is the wisdom of the world. Um, Wisdom of the world is what? Foolishness to God. And wisdom of God is foolishness to man. So, the wisdom of God surpasses every other wisdom. Every other wisdom. Now, the, the demonic, uh, that's what we read in James 3rd chapter always, I used to quote, the wisdom from above is pure, gentle and so on. 
but there is other wisdom which is sensual, earthly and demonic. James 3, 16 onwards if you see. And this demonic uh, wisdom only now they call it what? Intelligent science, right? They call it. Yeah, I think so. Intelligent science. It's nothing but witchcraft. It's nothing but to do with evil spirits. Nothing, it is nothing but speaking, I mean, I mean studying about the other spiritual world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People are involved in so much of occultism. Learning all evil powers and leaning evil spirits that give them power. They yield to it and some power they want. And they try to live with that power thinking they are powerful, but they are not powerful before the power of the true living God, the resurrection power. Hallelujah. Which we have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to always be empowered by the power of the true living God. Then you get the understanding. God can not reveal himself to foolish hearts. He chooses the foolish to confirm the wise. For them not to be foolish, continue to be foolish, but to be filled with the wisdom of above. God can fill such foolish people only with his wisdom. Hallelujah! To confirm the wise of the world. So we need to really ask God and if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. And the Lord shall give. So we need to ask Him and He will give and we'll be filled and moved by the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So uh, then, fourthly, fourthly, hallelujah, glory to God. If you read um, Songs of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 5. Songs of Solomon 8, 5. Who is this? Who is this? Coming up. Coming up. From the wilderness. From the wilderness. Leaning upon her beloved. Leaning upon her beloved. Who is this? Who is coming? Up from the wilderness. Yeah, who is coming up from the wilderness. Leaning upon her beloved. The beloved. The, the bride is leaning upon the beloved. Amen. When does this happen? When did she, hallelujah, really started uh, to learn to lean on the beloved? After much, you know, <laughs> had to learn to lean on the beloved. Why? Because chapter 3 and verse 4, the latter part of it, if you read, please read. Scarcely had I passed by them. Mm. When I found the one I love, when I found the one I love, I held him. I held him and would not let him go. Yeah, I held him when he found, when she found him, she held him and would not let him go. When we found Jesus initially, Amen. That was a right experience of every genuine child of God. When we found him, we held him and. Would not let him go. That means morning prayer, evening prayer, afternoon prayer, even while walking prayer. If need be, I would have knelt on the road also to, to, to pray. I had that much of fervency. I used to walk, walk, walk and pray. Sometimes, you know, some foolishness and all, but I never did it. But I was so prompted, so much of love overflowing for God. I wouldn't have my, I wouldn't uh, like mind uh, you know, kneeling even on the streets to pray. So that was the fervency, the first love. That's why God always tells you know, the people of Ephesus, the church of Ephesus, it says, I have one thing that is against you, that is you have lost your first love. Hallelujah. The fervency, the first love. It be so emotional, so much for God, all out for God. Hallelujah. And as the days go by, Hallelujah! Because of which God gives us comforts and brings us into some kind of, you know, protection. We make it into a comfort zone and we start giving God all sorts of excuses to seek Him and to find Him even when He comes and tries to reveal Himself to us. Hallelujah! That's what happened in chapter 5. The beloved comes and knocks at the door. 
she hears the beloved knocking and says, I was asleep. Please read verse 2, chapter 5, verse 2. I sleep, but my heart is awake. I sleep, but my heart is awake. See, that is spiritually. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. In flesh she is dying, almost dying. He, you who sleep among the dead, arise. Hallelujah. It's like that. She was sleeping, but her heart is awake. Half, 50-50. Half gone. Only half is there. That spirit is awake. The Lord says, spirit is willing, flesh is weak. Now she sold out in the flesh for the pleasures of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leaning and depending and, you know, Relying and finding comfort in the comfort zone, pleasures, pleasure seeking, or what else, luxuries of life. Never, ever, hallelujah, glory to God, seek for the luxuries of the world. It all pass away, all things. Solomon had everything possible on this earth. He enjoyed everything, finally ended up saying, Vanity, 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 all that, those things that are under the sun are nothing but vanity, he finishes. Hallelujah, there's nothing that really, all the things that are in the world will leave you empty. Hallelujah, that's not the real pleasure. Now people have become pleasure seeking. They want to enjoy the pleasures of the world. Where Moses fled away from the pleasures of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sought to suffer affliction with the children of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Oh, here she says, How can I open the door? I heard my beloved knocking. Yeah, please read. It is the voice of my beloved. It is the voice of my beloved. He not saying. He not saying. Open for me. Open for me. My sister. My sister. My love. My love. My dove. My dove. My perfect one. My perfect one. Who my head is covered with Yeah, you. yeah. Then first three. I have taken off my robe. Yeah, taken off my robe. How can I put it on? Again? How can I put it on? How long will it take for you to put on the robe? Hallelujah. It's just put it on. That is all. She finds it so reluctant to put on the robe. She's lethargic, slothful, lazy, lame excuses for God. Lazy spirit, lameness in spirit. What else to say? Spiritual slumber. The enemy has given, what do I say, all kinds of uh, anesthesia. <laughs> oh, they are in some kind of drunken stage. The spirit of the world, the harlotry spirit, which have holds the wine cup in her hand and makes the whole world drunk with her abomination. That's what people are drunk with, all kinds of lust of the eyes, lust of the uh, flesh, Lust of the world, lust of the self, selfish desires, self-desires of the flesh. They, they, they try to gratify their body, the flesh. They lean, lean on the pleasures of the world and that makes them not to lean on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then she says, how can I put it? I have washed my feet. I have washed my feet. How can I defile them? How can I defile them? How can I defile them? How were you? Who were you before? Hallelujah. Who are you now? How? I have washed my feet. For the beloved, she is not willing to put her feet and you know, it should not become dirty. Without become dirty, you cannot serve her. Because without become, you know, uh, you know putting yourself into Difficulties, troubles, hardships, it's impossible to follow Christ. Take up your yoke and take, take up the cross and follow me daily. Amen. You may come across so many spirits that would defy you. Hallelujah. In the, in the, in the process or in the uh, thing of searching or seeking the Lord your God, the spirits of hell will war against you. Try to defy you, but in spite of that, you have to war against those spirits and oh, overcome them through the blood of the Lamb and to the word of testimony. Go seeking, hallelujah, and searching for your beloved. Find him, 
Hallelujah. Then what happened? Oh, hallelujah. How can I defy my feet? My beloved put his hand mm. by the lamp. That's verse the 5. We don't have time. I arose to open for I my arose beloved. I arose to open, open the. Open for my beloved. Open for my beloved. And my hands dripped with. See? Mer. Uh, my hands dripped with. with mer. My fingers with liquid mud. Yeah, liquid mud. And the handles of the lock. Yeah, hand with mud and liquid mud. Full of all, you know, luxurious perfumes. <laughs> And all, all kinds of luxuries. Now her, her eyes are closed. Oh, hallelujah. You have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. The Lord says to the church of Sardis. And he says to the church of Laodicea, saying that, Oh, you are not uh, neither cold nor warm. You are lukewarm. I will warm with you. You say, I am rich and I am what? I see and I am clothed. I am so rich I have no wants at all. But the Lord says, but you are poor, you are naked. Hallelujah. And you are blind. And I advise you to buy the refined gold and to buy the white garment and to put, you know, I salve for your eyes, for you to see and for you to become rich, for you to be clothed. So why come from the subtlety, the deception, the enemy is injecting you, inject the blood of Jesus Christ into you and come back to your senses, shirking off all the falsehoods, hallelujah, that the pleasures and the luxuries give you. Amen. Hallelujah. Not that you have to become like a hermit, whatever the Lord gives, Hallelujah. Apostle Paul says, I have, oh hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, I can enjoy everything, but all would not edify me. All is the first uh, Corinthians 6th chapter. Twelfth verse. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. But not all things are helpful. Yeah, all things are lawful and all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. But I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. Nothing should rule over you, master over you. Amen. You should not nothing to, you should not become a slave for anything else of this world. Amen. You, you should learn to overpower them. You should learn to rule over them. You should learn to keep them under control. Apostle Paul also says, I have learned to be uh, away. Then please read this also. First Corinthians uh, 9, 10 and 11, the 23. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. But not all things are helpful. All things not all, all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. But not all things edify. All but not all things edify. Or all things will not edify means that will not make me to grow closer to God. Hallelujah. So I will not entertain all those things. Whatever comes on my way, whatever would be of edification, I will entertain. Whatever would be of help to me towards God, <coughs> moving towards God, thou that, that I will entertain. Other things, no. Hallelujah. You should know, learn to know, say no. That's what everything should be. Apostle Paul says the same First Corinthians 9 chapter, the last verse says, Hallelujah. That I should not become disqualified. What do I do? I bring myself, please read. But I discipline my body. Mm, verse 27. I discipline my body. And bring it into subjection. Yeah, you have to learn to bring it under subjection. The body which will always rebel against God's will. Hallelujah. Which will always want you to make, uh, do things that are the will of the enemy according to his lust. Or your own will. So you have to bring your body into subjection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For what? Lest when I preach to others. Lest when I preach to others. I myself should become disqualified. Yeah, I myself should become disqualified. So you should learn to tame, tame, tame up your the passions and the desires of your flesh, your spirit, your mind. Tame them up. 
Hallelujah. Bring them to the subjection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, in obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is your responsibility with the help of God. Hallelujah, you can do that. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So the luxury, the comfort seeking, will always, people will lean on that, will depend on that and they feel comfortable and all the seeking God will be monotonous again, come out of compulsion and out of, you know, routine. They do things in the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, uh, or two more things we'll see and finish with that. Uh, first, um, the Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, self-righteousness. Uh, leaning on self-righteousness will make us not to lean on God's righteousness. Quickly we read uh, Luke's Gospel 18 and verse 11. The Pharisee stood, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Yeah, the pa Pharisee stood and prayed thus to himself. God, God, I thank you. I thank you. That I am not like other men. That I am not like other men. Exhaustionists. Exhaustionists. Unjust. Unjust. Adulterers. Adulterers. Or even as this tax collector. Or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. See, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I give tithes of all that I possess. And that. Yeah, that's it. He is boasting about his righteous deeds in the name of God. But God is not a bit interested in his righteous deeds. The publican, tax collector, what did he do? Standing afar off. Standing afar off. Would not so much. Would not so much. As raise his eyes to yeah, heaven. Yeah, raise his eyes to heaven. But beat his breast saying. Beat his breast saying. God be merciful to God me. God be merciful to me. This touched God. But not the deeds of the Pharisees. God doesn't want deeds in the godly form. He wants, hallelujah, glory to God, our hallelujah. We may think, oh, I'm praying one hour, I'm reading the Bible, I'm doing my Christian duties. We are satisfied. But God is interested in personal relationship, one-to-one -one communion, getting connected with God, in prayers, getting connected with God through our Bible meditation, getting connected with God through the fellowship that we go. Hallelujah! Getting connected, always constant communion. Hallelujah! With God, that uh, that uh, that is that only interests God. Hallelujah! Otherwise, it's all self-righteous. We will be boasting about it. We will be contented with it. We will find some kind of satisfaction about it. But if you seek Him with all your heart, you shall find Him. We have to, that's how we have to work hard. And self-righteousness will always make you to lean on it and not to lean on the mercies of God. But here the public and the tax collector says, Lord, be merciful unto me, unto me a sinner. That only brings God to his side. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul learned that and whenever he says, I am what I am because of the mercies of God. And he says, I labor a lot in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, but not me, but the grace of God in me. Hallelujah. He also says, Hallelujah, glory to God. I have been made a minister to this I mean, I've been, I've been made a servant of this, servant of the Lord to minister unto the Gentiles you know, by the grace of God. <coughs> and also, then when he cries out to God, Lord, the thorn is in me, please remove you. Then the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. You've been all these days leaning on my grace and saying it's nothing but the grace of God, nothing but the grace of God. When the thorn comes, why do you cry out to me? Again, I tell you, my grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah! Total leaning, lean, leaning and depending and you know, relying on the mercies of God. Hallelujah! <coughs> Grace of God, the unmerited favor. We are not worthy to receive the mercies of God, but we receive that is the grace of God. So when we are Oh, hallelujah. Under the grace of God, when we lean and depend on the grace of God, Hallelujah. We find favor with God and the grace of God 
Oh, praise the Lord will keep us. We will remain humble when we lean on the grace of God. If you lean on your self-righteousness, it is a great sin. Jesus always rebuked the religious leaders, religious people. He never could tolerate them. They were like abominations to him. So he always rebuked. He could see, look at a sinner, but not to a religious person. Oh, total deception. So that should not happen. Apostle Paul states about his religious life previous prior to coming to the Lord in Philippians 3rd chapter. He speaks about his self-righteousness, how it could not, hallelujah, glory to God, draw him closer to God, instead by the faith on the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. He says, I don't rely on the, uh, you know, uh, self-righteousness through the law. Chapter 3 and verse 9. But the righteousness through the faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have time, that's why I'm just moving. So, the righteousness through law, law means do this, do that, pray, uh, seek God and you know, give tithes, give offering, give, go to church, come back. Monotonous way of doing all rules and regulations of Christianity is not of God's choice. But hallelujah, glory to God, that will make us become self-righteous and depend on it instead of depending on the mercies of God. But when you put your trust, faith on the Lord, whatever you do, do it because you have faith. You put your faith. Because you do, you're doing it because you have faith. Your faith in the Lord should make you to do things. Amen. Amen. That's the righteousness God approves. Hallelujah. And that's the righteousness we need to possess. Okay. Finally, hallelujah, this message came to my mind only through this verse and that is what we are going to see in the final stage. In the book of Judges, if you read the second chapter after Joshua and all other elders died and Israelites became, uh, went Odin, went away from God and God became so angry with them and then God, when they cried out to God, God raised churches and when the churches came and rescued them and, uh, you know, delivered them from the hands of the enemies, oh hallelujah, if, if you read the history, oh, as long as the churches were, they were ruling the nation, the nation was at peace and they were at peace with God also. Everything were in regularities, everything in, in regular, going moving in a regular basis. And everything was fine. But once the church dies, immediately they go away from God. That means, hallelujah, glory to God. They lean on the leadership, but not on God personally. Hallelujah. Every week Christians, God be God's chosen people, redeemed people. Many Christians, they lean on the servants of God. They won't pray, they won't fast, they won't read Bible, but they go running to the servant of God to get prayed. Servants of God are nothing but channels to guide and to lead people towards God. Hallelujah! You go to, people go to school, colleges and all that. They can't depend or lean on the teachers to get good marks. Hallelujah! They have to work hard and whatever, they have to put it in action, whatever they have learned, give the test and get the marks. Hallelujah! Personally, teachers can teach that to so all. They cannot give good marks. Only your efforts will have to bring. So likewise, servants of God, they are here to guide people, to lead people, to show them the way, to teach them the truth. Hallelujah. That is all. They can back them up in prayers. They can help them in prayers. They can guide them whenever trouble comes. They can join along. Hallelujah. To help them. But God expects one-to-one -one relationship with every Christian. Hallelujah. Every individual, they should be personally able to reach out to God, taste, or taste and see that the Lord is good. Personally, they have to taste that the Lord is good. Personally, they have to be rooted in the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Only their faith will save them. Hallelujah. So personally rooted in the Lord and when trials, affliction comes, God will use his servants or you, they may run to the servants of God for help because they are new in the Lord. Servants of God should help them out of their problems. Hallelujah. So all these things are there. So if we, because they depend on the leaders, spiritual leaders or whatever leaders, they don't do their exercise, homework, in the times of trials and tests, they won't be able to stand up for God. Hallelujah. They fall away. That's why falling away happens. In the last days because they are not rooted in the Lord personally. So we need to learn to be rooted and personally we are connected and you know always fellowship is a must, church is a must, servant of God, leader is a must to, for people to be disciplined and to be Oh, 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 hallelujah, brought up in a disciplined way. And some people, they, they will despise the servant of God, despise the church. That is another extreme. Hallelujah. Where they go astray, they are gone. Once and for all, the enemy will. Hallelujah, glory to God. They become a novice. And end up in the same condemnation as of the devil. That is also another extreme. Hallelujah, glory to God. Come, listen, we have fellowship. Be one with God and God's people. Hallelujah. And then go out and have your personal encounter relationship. Oh, hallelujah. With the Lord your God. Amen. Leaning on God personally and finding Him. Shall we close?